Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. This is Auto Line Daily for July 21st, 2010, and now the news. Just when it seems like one labor dispute is settled in China, another one pops up, and again, it is at a Japanese owned company. According to Reuters, workers at Omron, an auto electronic supplier, have gone on strike for higher wages. What I'm told by industry insiders is that the Chinese government is okay with these strikes. It knows it has to let wages go up, but it wants to let foreign owned companies take the brunt of any labor strikes, specifically Japanese owned companies. I haven't been able to verify this, but I would say so far the strikes have only been at Japanese companies. When Takeo Fukui was CEO of Honda, the company did not pursue electric vehicles nearly as intensely as its competition was doing, but things are starting to change now that new CEO, Takanobu Ito, is in charge. According to Bloomberg, the company announced it will begin selling a pure electric vehicle by 2012 and will also have a plug-in electric on the market the same year. Ito says battery research has accelerated since he's taken over the company, and part of that's being spurred on by California's mandate that large automakers must sell 60,000 electrics or plug-ins between 2012 and 2014. Ford showed the media the new Explorer yesterday, and while all that information is embargoed until Monday, we can piece together some of the things the company already publicly announced to learn more about it. For example, Ford says with its four-cylinder EcoBoost engine, the new Explorer will get the same highway fuel economy as a V6 Toyota Camry, which would be 28 miles to the gallon. But I believe Ford wants to hit 30 miles per gallon, or 7.8 liters per 100 kilometers, just like it did with the V6 Mustang. Actually, that got 31 miles per gallon, but 30 miles per gallon is a magic number which would shatter people's perceptions that SUVs are only gas guzzlers. And that could bring more people back into the SUV segment. So what happens when you get rid of 2,000 car dealers, which is exactly what GM and Chrysler did? Well, the ones that survive start making a lot more money. Bloomberg says that the big publicly traded retailers in the American market, including the Penske Automotive Group, AutoNation, and Sonic Automotive, will post their strongest sales in several years. Even though a federal watchdog criticized the Automotive Task Force this week for not considering the impact on unemployment when it told GM and Chrysler to get rid of so many dealers, Bloomberg quotes a spokesman from Penske as saying, Detroit's automakers still have too many dealers. A typical Toyota dealer still sells twice as many cars as a typical dealer for GM, Ford, or Chrysler. Why hasn't anyone thought of this one before? In a move that sees, seems blatantly obvious, Jeep and Mopar will be the first in the industry to offer customers off-road camper trailers. Two models will be available, the Trail and the Extreme Trail. Both are styled after the Jeep Wrangler, but more importantly, they're designed to match the 4x4's off-road capabilities. The campers are built around a tubular aluminum frame and feature a torsion bar trailing arm suspension setup. The Trail Edition offers 76 inches of headroom, a queen-size bed, and enough space to sleep four people. It also delivers 12 inches of ground clearance. The Extreme model ups that to 15 inches, thanks to a heavy-duty frame and an underbody skid plate. The campers also use the same wheels as the Wrangler, so if you get a flat tire on the trail, you can always swap out the vehicle spare. Both models will be available at dealerships in August as a Mopar accessory. Base MSRP for the Trail Edition is $10,000, while the Extreme Trail starts at twelve dollars Here's a story that gives new meaning to the phrase, a life in the fast lane. In an event to celebrate its Ruhr region, Germany threw a gigantic party on the Autobahn. According to the BBC, a 40-mile stretch of the highway between the cities of Duisburg and Dortmund was closed to traffic and opened to the people. Party organizers provided some 20,000 tables so people could eat, drink, and socialize. It's estimated that as many as 3 million people showed up at the event. In fact, it was so crowded that the road had to be closed to cyclists due to the traffic jams. Coming up next, it is time for You Said It. 
Introducing Bridgestone's third generation of run-flat tires with groundbreaking new Bridgestone technologies. Bridgestone run-flat tires offer improved ride comfort, lower rolling resistance, and improved wear while giving you the peace of mind and comfort you need. And now it's time for some of your feedback. Grant Fisher from Mississauga in Canada saw our report on the JD Power appeal study, which showed that the big three topped the imports for the first time ever, and he writes in with a correction. In your report about JD Power's appeal should be spelled appeal. I know we have different spellings of words in Canada versus the US, like check versus check, but I think you're off on the spelling of appeal. Grant, we love it when viewers like you write in to correct us if we get something wrong, but in this case, we actually got it right. Appeal is a name for a study that stands for Automotive Performance, Execution, and Layout. And we got a correction for you. The past tense of spell is spelled, not spelt. Yesterday, we reported that Mercedes is developing a nine-speed transmission, and I asked if anyone remembered the Mitsubishi twin-stick transmission. Ken Stadden did. He writes in to say, my parents had a twin-stick Plymouth Champ around 1980 that was a four-speed plus low-range, high-range lever. I figured out how to shift it sequentially. Some of those shifts required two hands, but two of the eight speeds were virtual duplicates of each other, so effectively, it was a six-speed. Still pretty good for the day. My folks thought I was nuts, by the way. Ken, you were shifting with two hands? Your folks were right. Don McConnell saw our report that the latest generation of Ford Sync system can recognize 10,000 different commands. He says, Ford's recognition was already cool, but with an extended vocabulary. I wonder what it will do when I cuss out other drivers. Maybe it'll say, calm down, Don. Don, the way these electronic systems are going, it's going to grab you by the throat and wash your mouth out with soap. And that's it for today's top news in the global automotive industry. Thanks for tuning in. We will see you tomorrow.